In this video, we will learn what are migrations and metadata in Hasura, why it's so important and how to work with it. Subscribe to this channel if you want to get more videos about Hasura and web development in particular. And if you are done, we are getting started. Hi there, my name is Dmitry Mrzhensky and let's have a look on the application we built in previous videos. It is just simple to-do list and it has some basic authentications. And let's imagine that new developer joins our team and he wants to just check out the source code from the Git repo and run on his local machine. Or let's imagine that we want to push our application somewhere to the staging server or production, whatever, where everything is being started from scratch. So let's emulate such a situation and let's see what we will achieve. I will just stop Hasura engine and remove db underscore data folder. But before to remove, I will save a copy somewhere on a desktop. Yeah, the best place for such a different trash. Now let's run Hasura again and let's see what will happen. Okay, sometimes Hasura starts earlier than Postgres and Hasura fails. If you encounter such an issue, just restart Hasura docking container and it should be fine. And we reload our app and we see that it's failing. And it makes sense because if we go to Hasura console, we will see that all our tables are gone. And that's the problem what we want to solve. And this is where migrations comes in. So migrations, it's kind of scripts and, but not kind of, it is SQL scripts, which allows you to reconstruct your database schema. And uh, it's kind of a change log of the changes in your database schema. And besides migration, Hasura also uh, has such a thing like metadata. And metadata is actually an internal table which stores the state of how to display the certain field in Hasura endpoint or um, it can store the permission rules, it can store also relationships, event triggers and many things more. And But let me show you how it looks in real life. So let's revert our database and then restart Hasura and go to the console. And let's imagine that I don't want to expose column full name to GraphQL endpoint as it is, but I want to create some alias. Let's say I want to name it is as display name. So I can change it in this particular field and I can save it. And now in graphical, I cannot access it is as full name anymore because now we should use this alias display name. All right. So this alias, this state is being stored in metadata. And let me revert it back. And, and what else is being stored here? So this is relations. Do you remember we created one for the tasks user relation that you can see here? Then it is permissions. If you remember in previous video about Hasura authentication, we saw it a little bit. And this everything is metadata. So migrations, it's database structure and metadata, it's everything around this, yeah? All these decorations. So once we know what is metadata and migrations, we can create our first migration. First of all, we need to install Hasura CLI. Here is the installation page. Link will be added to the description. Here you can find instructions how to install it for your operating system and so on. And once you install it, you can run Hasura version command and you should see something similar. 
And just to keep versions in sync, I will also update my Hasura to the, to the same version 1.2.2. Now we can run Hasura init to create unnecessary folder and file structure. It asks in which folder we want to create it, but I want to have it in the root, so I will enter just dot here. As you can see, Hasura created some new folders. One of them is migration and metadata as well. It is where our migrations and metadata are gonna live. And now we can run Hasura migrate create init, then dash dash from server, and then dash dash endpoint, which is our Hasura endpoint, and then we have to provide dash dash admin secret and our secret, because if you remember, we, uh, we have hidden Hasura console in previous video because of authentication. And after this, we should also export metadata. For this, we'll run the command Hasura metadata export and again dash dash endpoint to define the to tell Hasura CLI which endpoint we're going to use and dash dash admin secret to access this endpoint. And here we go. We see that we got a new migration file app.sql and we see that inside was generated SQL script, which will create tables, which have some schema, what we have right now. And in metadata folder, in file tables.yaml, we see that our tables are marked as public, which means accessible for GraphQL queries and also whole, I know, permissions are there, everything is fine. At this point, you could think that that was it and you most probably wanted to already click the subscribe button and close this video. But on this channel, we are trying to dive deeper into technology. So stay here and let me show you one more things. I want to start with one life hack. You see that we should always use flags like dash dash endpoint and dash dash admin secret every time in every command. So to make it shorter, we can define these params in config YAML file. Let's just change endpoints port and add admin secret. And here is our admin secret. And now we can drop these params in our next commands. Now let's try to remove our database again. Restart Hasura. Check that there is no data anymore. And now we have to apply these migrations and metadata. To do this, run following command. Hasura migrate apply. That's it. You don't need to provide additional flags because we provided them in config YAML. And then to apply metadata, just run Hasura metadata apply. Now, if we check our console, we will see that our tables were reconstructed, but without data. And this is actually okay. At least our application will not be broken. But if we want to have also predefined data, we have to use seed migration, which we'll learn in the next video. But as I said, it's okay, it's completely fine for now. And we can check that our application looks fine and everything works. So now let's imagine I want to add the new field to our tasks. So I want to add is completed field. Okay, so it's gonna be Boolean and by default false. I add this column and it has been added. And now I also have to add this column to the permission section to be able to insert and select this. Here we go, say permission. 
And now I will create the new migration with Hasura Migrate, but instead of init, I will name it as is completed feature whatever. And I will say that it's from server and the migration has been created. And don't forget to export also metadata. So metadata was successfully exported and now we can see that has been created the new migration with the new migration you can see inside that was added our field there and the same thing in tables yaml so means our metadata is completed is there so and we have to now apply the migration but wouldn't it be great to apply these migrations automatically once we start the docker container and i will show you the way how to achieve this let's go to our documentation in hasura and find the section auto apply migrations metadata here you can see that there is the separate docker image which is which has the same name but some suffix and let's copy this and add this in our docker compose yaml and let's see how it will work i will start my docker containers i remove um, the data folder and start the docker compose again it will take some time because it needs to pull the new image from the docker registry and i'm reloading and nothing happened Okay, I think I know what the issue is because documentation says that we, where is this? Yeah, we have to mount this, our migration from our disk into the container. So let's do this. Let's copy and here I will add the volumes and mount our migration and also metadata. Okay, let's change to metadata. Here we go. I stop the Hasura. I start it again. And we have another issue. Relation tasks already exist. Okay, I know what the issue. I I did the big, big mistake actually. The issue is that our migrations are trying to create the same tables and the same relations yeah looks like it is and the solution would be to remove one of the migrations so i will remove the first one and try to restart restart our docker container but i will remove also the, the database data and now it looks way more better and let's go to the console and reload yeah and now we see that metadata and migrations were applied and now let me explain what was the issue here so the thing is this uh, migration command in hasura cli it takes how it works it takes the your database schema and from this schema it creates the migration but it doesn't take into consideration the result of previous migration so we created the two migrations first created the tasks table and the second one wants to create the same and here it goes into contradiction because the previous previous our initial migration created this table and that's why it fails and we need something like we want to create the migration which takes the latest state from the latest migration and creates the changes from this point to the to the moment when we want to uh, commit our changes and there is a way how to do this i will show you in few seconds but just keep in mind that this migration create command is only applicable for initial migration so if you want to create the very first migration use this command otherwise 
follow the method I will show you in few seconds. So I will go to another tab and you can run such a command Hasura console and you will be navigated to the Hasura console and let's maybe change modify somehow user I want to add I want to add some age field as example and then in tasks I want to also add I don't know list ID whatever we're not going to use it but just for experiment and I will add also create an add field and now if we go to our code we see that for every single action was created separate migration and yeah you can see there was the down and up migration so you can roll back your changes or apply these um, changes to your database and um, yeah that's the way how you should create your migrations your further migration so initial was with this command migrations create and the uh, others migration you should use this hasura console and then just just change the database schema the migration will be created automatically but there is one drawback and the drawback is that most probably you will end up with the hundreds of migration files it looks messy you most probably would like to squash it to one migration file so yeah like one migration per, per feature which is would be way more better also for reviewers if you work in the team and there is a way how to achieve this uh, hasura cli has such a method like hasura migrate squash you can give any name to this new migration and you have to define from which migration you want to squash and you have to define id of this migration and this id is the first digits in the uh, migrations folder so i will copy this and apply and it will squash all migrations starting from this particular migration everything what goes after it will be squashed into one and now it asks us if we want to remove these um, previously created migrations. And yeah, I would like to remove this and leave only this merged version. And we can see that this tutorial demo migration was created. And now we can stop it and do the final check. I will remove again uh, db data folder and I will restart my Hasura and then I will go to console Hasura console I will check that everything is working now let's create a new user we have to create because the profile of our old user was deleted because we removed completely the database uh, folder and then I will add some final migrations check whatever description and I can submit and we see that our application works like charm.